and we are playing in Platinum ELO now. We just got out of the Gold ELO Hell, and now we're going to be playing with the Plat players. Plat is probably, in my opinion, the most toxic ELO in the game. And I've played a good amount in Plat already, and I could definitely give you guys a lot of understanding as to why it's so bad. I think, honestly, the main thing I could tell you is that every player in Plat thinks that they're really, really good, and that their way is the best way. But every player thinks that their way is the best way. And not every player has the same idea and has the same way of playing. So this is where a lot of egos will collide. I, I, I find Plat and Diamond to be the main place where egos start colliding really hard. And the toxicity level just get ramped up all the way to the highest of the high. So I'm still going to be doing the same things that I've been teaching since the beginning. Same path, same clear. I'm still going to be playing my own playstyle, but you will notice that in this elo, you'll be getting trolled a little bit more. You'll be getting flamed a little bit more. But the main two things I always tell you boys of how to climb and how to be a good player across all elos. Consistency, good mental. And this is definitely where the good mental is going to have to start showing. So first things first, enemy Jung is starting bot side. He's actually pathing into me. You'll, you'll start to notice that a lot of more higher elo mechanics and mentality it's going to start taking over so people are going to be a little bit more objective based people are going to be smarter with their itemization they're going to be smarter with where they move around the map a little bit not too much but a little bit so this is where you got to start taking the game a lot more serious if you do want to climb out of platinum elo this is where it is a bit of a a bit of a skill curve as opposed to just you know gold silver bronze you can kind of just play however and you climb play play a lot you'll climb Platinum is where you got to start putting in some more effort. So, things that you're going to want to do, you got to want to make sure that you can clear fast, you want to make sure that you can path fast, you want to make sure that you know where you're pathing to. And it's it's very simple. I always say the same thing. If you want to go red form, usually path towards top side, play for the top side objective. If you want to go blue form, usually path bot side for the bot side objective. Now, this game's weird because they have a Teemo top, but notice that their team comp is kind of uh, good for red or blue. So I'm kind of just pathing wherever. I'm going to go whatever form I want. But I do want to play for the top side objective this game. I do want to get the Rift because I feel like it'd be good to put the Teemo behind. So this is where you're going to start to want to understand how lane matchups work. So Teemo versus Nasus. Nasus has really good setup for the Teemo gank, actually, uh, because he could just wither him and then we could just beat the hell out of him. So it's pretty easy to get on top of the Teemo and he's always going to be pushing. So if a laner is very aggressive and they're always going to be pushing, then you're going to want to look to play towards that lane. As opposed to our bot lane, it's a double range versus, you know, a melee range. So they're going to be shoving in. This lane is going to be getting shoved in. So this is typically where that, you know, you're going to start using your brain a little bit more. Might actually not be able to kill the Teemo here, though. He's going to do that invis nonsense. Nasus didn't really react to the gank the way I thought he would. He more uses flash for me, that's fine. Yeah, sometimes you don't really get the reactions to the ganks that you want. But the thing is, is that it's not really about if a certain play works or not. Because it's all about setting yourself up for those certain plays. But yeah, I mean, I wanted to get the gank off, I wanted to get a kill, or I wanted to get the scuttle. But, you're not always going to get what you want. And that's just where I say the good mental really has to play into it. And that's the consistency of the gameplay. Ideally, if Nasus reacted, he ghosted earlier, we kill him, but fine. Timo uses flash, we traded flashes. So I know his flash timer is the same as my flash timer. Uh, I, I kind of want to fight the bot scuttle, but you just have to think about the champion Warwick, how Warwick's designed. He's designed to just be an early game bully. So if he wants to go for the bot scuttle, if he wants to take the top scuttle, I can tell that he probably hasn't yet, but he's gone for that top scuttle. I could check right now, but notice that their bot lane's missing. I'm kind of worried that they might rotate. Normally when I look for things like this, I look to kind of scout it out first. Now we can get it. This game's kind of scary. AP Twitch does a lot of true damage. I might have to actually go blue this game and just look to one-shot him. Just destroy him like that. Not a cannon wave. Hammer's right here, otherwise I'd catch it. Warwick should be resetting. Warwick should be resetting right now. Teemo is going to be in a position where his lane is actually shoving into Teemo, but just the nature of how he plays, he'll probably sh keep pushing. A lot of people don't know how to actually like manage waves at this rank, so it's pretty good for you. There's a lot of things that you can't take advantage of, and what are you guys saying in chat? 
Ellen, I heard your story, bro, and kind of relate my school life. I was the loner kid. Uh, I swear after I did... What makes you guys think I was the loner kid? Or be the way. Oh, he doesn't have any mana. So yeah, this is not gankable. We're still just farming. Very ambitious to look for anything in Warwick's top side. He just did his raptors. Now he's heading over to his bot side camps. So he didn't do his krugs. If you count his CS, it went from 20 to 24. He can go up by two. And he did it pretty quick, so his krugs should be up. So this is the most I could do right now. He might look to get the dragon. But see, this is kind of how you play Kane in these situations. I always mention, if a jungler is like an early game jungler, you want to look to just try and outpath them, invade them as much as you can. Also, you want to make sure that you're pinging them out. So reading their camps is more complex mechanics are definitely going to play into it. So reading camps is extremely easy. And I, I've, a lot of my games, a lot of my videos, I'll teach you guys how to do that. But it, it all starts with tracking where they start and then kind of counting what they've done. So he farmed one camp bot, probably his wolves. His Gromp and Blue are up, so he's probably going to look to farm that. So we know how long he's going to be around bot side. So if anything is looking gankable, bot or mid, I need to look to A, counter gank, if I think we win the 2v2, or B, I could just ping my team out. Most of the time, you just ping your team out and you just farm. But if I do feel like counter ganking, that could work too. Counter ganking, it usually has to do with, if you're a challenger level player, you can just read where he's going to go, but usually you just set up some vision. So if I know he's playing a lot more towards bot side, I'm kind of reading his mannerisms as a player. If I'm looking into stuff like that, then, you know, I could set up some bot side vision. He's very aggressive, so he's probably going to go for that bot scuttle. I have my bot lane resetting, so I know that he's probably just going to get it. That's fine. I don't need to let him know where I'm at either, so I could actually just clear my bot side and stick towards my top side. And if he stays bot for a while, that means I can get the raptors and I can get the rift. And I can maybe look for a top gank. So normally when you're up against these like stronger early game junglers, you're not actually looking to beat them heads up. You're looking to just simply get more out of the situation. No. We could also look to steal the dragon here. Be a little bit ambitious because he's sticking around, right? Didn't walk up. And look, he's on it. For the ward here. Now we have more vision. And because I have a winning bot, it's even more doable. Waste his time. Okay, he got off it. We can honestly do it ourselves if we wanted to. Alright, just waste the time, it's fine. So this is what that vision does for me. If I know that he doesn't have his bot side camps, and I know that he's sticking around, then I know that what he's doing. He might look for it again, but if he doesn't, well then I could always just look for his raptors here. It's getting poked out a lot, that's good. Works right here. Oh, dude, Teemo flashed on me again. Honestly, I should have been paying more attention to the Teemo being there. A little bit unfortunate. I had flash ignited on at two of them. Got a one for one, though, and they invest a lot. Nas is just free farm, so that's good. Good for the Nasus at least. I probably could have dodged the work ult if I was, like... A little bit more focus. It's not bad though, like I mentioned. Just gives Nasus a lot of free farm, a lot of free stocks here as well. This guy didn't farm his Krugs, by the way. He just went straight to the dragon. This might still stronger than his, but I don't want to just be in the situation where I'm like perma fighting. Like, oh yeah, let me just perma fight him when I can just go and farm a bunch of camps and get more out of the situation, like I said. Because if he's not invading me and I'm getting invades, it's a slow build-up. I can go get the Krugs here. So he's just going to get the Dragon, right? I'm going to get the Krugs, and I'm going to get the Rift, and then maybe I can gank top as well after. Because we, now we know that Teemo has no Flash. And my Nasus is pretty strong. Unlucky, like I said, you always want to look for those lanes to play off of. So far, me and Nasus have zero synergy. The rule of thumb usually is that I'll gank a lane twice, and if they don't react to it the way that I need them to react to it twice, that's when I'll start stop ganking for them. So, I ganked him once and he didn't react to it. If I gank him twice, he doesn't react to it. Well, then, oh, we'll see. 
wanted to check if his red was here. I, I, I didn't think he farmed his red. That's why I was like kind of curious. And I pressed tab. So a lot of people ask me, why do I spam tab? Because I'm always looking at their CS. I'm always looking at the items before I go in for anything, you know? There's so much to actually look at. There's so much importance, you know? This phase rush just got proc there, so we could just chase him down. If Nasus just full sends him. Send him. Look, I don't even need to use my flash here. He just walks right into me. I'll smite him. I kind of want the kill. Using, I wanted to save my smite for the rift for sure, but... Nah, I'll just smite him. Okay. I have another smite coming up. Hammer dying mid's pretty bad. Mork's gonna go to his... He's going to the rift, actually. I need help. Help! Help! He wastes E. I can actually grab this when I'm inside. Oh, Nasus grabbed it. Oh, Lord. Oh, big dogs popping off at least. I mean, I'll take it. He did come. He did get the kills. <laughs> STFU, don't ping me. I've had no help. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see what I meant? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say that Plat is by far the most toxic elo and people are very 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 stubborn and very angry. I'm just happy that he came. I'm not even pissed. Um, Probably gonna go purple cane this game. Purple cane is actually when you go red build, red runes, and you go blue cane. I was thinking about it. Basically what I was looking for this game to decide whether I want to go purple or not was if Darius and Warwick were ahead I was gonna go red and if Timo uh, Twitch and Soraka were doing well I was gonna go blue so, that's pretty good I could have the CC but it's okay yeah platinum's definitely like solo player game mode You'll find better team play in every elo that is not plat diamond. In bronze and silver, you'll find better team play. Because everyone's just, it's solo campaign mode. So, but that's the thing that I'm teaching. This is why if you are a platinum diamond player, this should be your wake up call that you can finally get out of this elo because everything that I'm teaching you, every single thing is all about just playing for yourself, playing off yourself, being solo reliant. Yeah, I knew this guy had no anything so I could just go in all him. Oh I got the can next be nice. I just snag that real quick. Sorry Heimer. <laughs> I'm not sorry. A minute and a half till we have our dragon objective so that'll be good. Look to kill the Timo here. I would just look for the invades. A lot of times, this is where a lot of flat players lack. They're not doing enough to like punish and invade. And they're not reading into the enemy champions as well. Playing off your strengths and weaknesses of each team. It definitely requires a lot more, but if you're going to be playing in, in Platinum to get to Diamond, it's a very... That's when League starts getting very prestigious. You start playing in ranks where, you know, things get a lot more serious. So you have to take the game a lot more serious. So you have to be willing to understand certain concepts and or make up for it mechanically. Because some people... You'll notice in Plat Diamond Master Grandmaster, they're not very smart, but they have really good mechanics. So if you have really good mechanics, I usually think jungle isn't really about mechanics. It's more so about game knowledge, unless you're playing like Lisa, Nidley, Kindred, you know, stuff like that. Very high tempo champs that just kind of run around and fight. A lot of jungle is actually to do with your game knowledge though. I don't have any anti-heal for their bot lane. That's exactly what item I need here because they have so much healing and sustain. So that's just a thing I'm talking about with like understanding the game. Understanding like certain concepts of, oh, this team has this, so we need to get this. You know, they have three major healers, so we need to get anti-heal, right? It's, it's a priority. And then, oh, well, that, let's say they have like a lot of armor stackers, then we need to get this. If they have a lot of this, we need to get that, right? I don't want to give this dragon, especially since I have a tier 3 smite and he has a tier 2. So what I'm going to do here is actually play very aggressive. 
And this is another thing you have to realize, is that if you're ahead and you have advantages, you have to know how to play with said advantages. If I have an item advantage, I'm looking to force more fights. If I have XP advantage, I'm looking to use my abilities, my advantage, you know, my level 11 ult. If I have a smite advantage, well then I'm looking to secure all the objectives, right? And the good thing about Kane, and this is why I, I'm obsessed with Kane, is that he is Mr. Do-It-All. I can go in, secure the objective, be aggressive, not have any fear. And I can get out. Like, I, I, I can get in and get out of almost every situation. I can pick and choose a lot of the fights I want to play for. And this is exactly why a lot of people actually play at a champ called Ribbon in top lane. She was very similar. A lot of the things that you want to go for... You know, you were fully in control, but Kane actually takes it to a whole new degree because Kane has control of the entire map. Then a lot of people are going to think, you know, well, what's his downside? Well, you have to think about if enemy jungler is good and they understand how to play into you, well, then, you know, it's going to be some tough, tough things to deal with. But that's only really at the highest ranks. As you guys can see, I've been breezing through this. Every, every elo, I've been breezing through it. Maybe get a loss or two every now and then. I think in gold... Um, I lose any games? I don't think I lost any games in gold. Gold was actually really easy. Silver I got into it a couple times. It was really toxic. Platinum. So far I've been doing good. Usually I breeze through platinum. I just have to like, you know, deal with the harassments. I have, I have a good mental though, so it doesn't really bother me. Nice, that's perfect. A little bit low on the mobility, but. Oh. Wait, I accidentally gore drinkered and then queued. I actually did my combo backwards. I almost died for that. I'm gonna stay. And he. I'm gonna say I'm gonna stand still to not get hit by a Teemo Shroom and reset, but then he walked right to a Teemo Shroom and got me killed. Pretty unluck. All good. Alright, I'm gonna get Chainsword. This would be so important. Alright, now we just play for the objective. Get all the T1 towers down, play for the objectives. You will notice that I'm starting to die a lot more too in these elos. But some deaths are necessary. Both my deaths this game actually were not necessary at, at all. One of them worked out really well for us because we got a lot from it, but the other one, pretty unnecessary. But just the willingness to be in aggressive situations is what leads to dying. So I'll never be a KDA player, but I do always agree that you should be playing to not die, you know? Sometimes you have to. I think every good player knows that. KDA players are the worst. We have a lot of advantages that we're playing through. Normally you'd want to use the Heimer to force objectives, but this guy's kind of just in his own little bubble, which is what I've exactly I've been talking about with Plot. I feel like a lot of Plot viewers that are going to watch this are going to be like, oh, this guy finally gets it. Someone who understands it, but yeah, I, I've played in plat for a good amount of games now. This is a uh, low plat. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting into it with this account, but on other accounts, I've played in it a lot, and it is, yeah, it's a lot to handle. But it is definitely climbable. Definitely climbable, because most of the time, when you start reaching plat diamond, people, at the end of the day, they'll be angry, they'll be frustrated, but it's because they want to win, so... It's really hard to refuse a free win, and that's kind of what I'm teaching you guys how to give your team wins. Not everyone wants to take it, but most teams will generally be like, oh yeah, this is a free win, I'll take it. Okay, so right now I'm just farming all my camps, trying to get as much gold next speed. This is what I meant with the selfish playstyle. I'm always playing to get myself ahead. I'll get my team ahead, like I, I help Nasus out a good amount, I feel like. And I'll, I'll kind of like support the lanes or not. They do a lot of damage to wards specifically. Yeah, I was waiting for them to go like past the certain threshold. That way they're kind of baited in. Because I know they don't have the damage to actually kill Nasus there. Susan. As long as he doesn't get his E off on me there, we're good. Nice. Better flash. So this is definitely an elo where you do want to track like flash timers and ulti timers and whatnot as well. You don't necessarily need to, but it is going to help you a lot. You're going to have a lot of leverage on the players you're playing against. Generally, it's not, it's not hard to get advantages on players in this elo. People don't really pay attention to like camps. So tracking camps will put you like miles ahead of junglers all the way up to like Grandmaster. Um, having timers will put you ahead of junglers all the way up to like Grandmaster as well. Um... 
Knowing how to itemize will put you above players all the way up to Grandmaster as well. So just knowing, you know, copying my build, copying my runes, all that jazz. A lot of the things I'm teaching you from the get-go have been to teach you how to become and play very self-sufficient all the way up to like Grandmaster. To teach you how to be a challenger player, that'll come at the end. That'll be the finale video of this series. But it's a little bit different. Right there, process of elimination. Most top side, Darius, Soraka are mid. No one's hovering around bot. The only thing, the only way that they could win this game, only way they could win this game, is if they sneak this Baron. That's what you always have to think about. What is their way that they could win this game? If the game isn't over, then there's always a way that they could win, right? What was happening here? Teemo was camping this, waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for us to do the dragon so they can sneak the Baron, right? Because they have Warwick, they have Twitch, and they have Teemo. Three champions that are synonymous with doing Baron very fast. Very, very fast. They don't win a straight up team fight because we have a Fed Nasus, and Fed Nasus just doesn't take any damage at this point in time. They have two options. One, stall the game out. Or two, sneak the Baron and get the free gold XP to outscale us. And my team's doing Baron without me or my smite. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah. yeah. Good mental, guys. Good mental. Good mental. That'll carry you through all the elos, I promise you. I pinged that my smile wasn't up, but yeah. There's a reason why I wasn't trying to start the Baron. You never want to do Baron or start the Baron unless they are clean ace without your smite. Ever. Unless you have full vision, I guess. There's, there's some variables that'll make it viable. But yeah, now this game went from extremely free to a little bit scary. But sometimes, you know, as long as you're consistently trying. See, this is where a lot of players will falter because you'll be like, Oh no, my free win. Now I'm upset. Well, no win's a free win. You want a high-low mentality? No win's a free win. You keep trying and you keep killing them and you keep playing until the game's over. Because I had to learn it the hard way. When I, when I was playing my first time around like Diamond Master, High Diamond Master, I, was, I would get ahead and be like, oh, this game's free, and not try as hard. Then they'd always come back and win, and I'd be like, damn. So you never want to think a game's over till it's over. And find them, they do that a lot, so you want to cut that mentality, 100%. You're getting a lot of objective bounty gold here. Ideally, you'd want someone to match. Right now, I'm just like taking and denying resources. Essentially looking deep, but Nass is backed up. Just so look, I can only really play through my strengths, and a lot of my strengths is Nasus, and this guy refused to play off anyone. So the way that I play is I don't get angry at him and like try and boss him around. I just let him play and I try and like work my way with him. You know what I mean? I just waste his ghost, so we should look to fight this genuinely. I'm trying to bait him into the Nasus here, but. I'm just sitting inside to kind of zone him out here. Oh, I missed my W on that guy. Not bad though. I just played to live there. For some reason they want to full send me into the fight the Nasus, so now they just lose. Pretty sure. Did they? Oh no. Nasus died to Twitch. That's really bad guys, by the way. It's really, really bad. That's also bad. Do we get anything here? I don't think we do. Maybe. Actually, maybe. You know what? If we just act really ballsy, we might actually be able to get this. Then we don't have to worry. Because, yeah, this game's getting scary, boys. They are outscaling like a mofo. They are outscaling so hard. Work's going to come up, but I'm just going to W him, I think. Damn, if I dodge that ulti, bro, I actually live. Should have been playing to dodge the ulti. I honestly wanted to see if I can get one more Q off and then try an ulti out. I want to tr cover more, more space there. Ulting right here is a lot more dangerous than ulting right here. Because if I ulti right here, I get the E and Q. That's worth it. We open up the base. So now we just have infinite backdoor pr pressure. So we don't have to actually worry about winning a team fight. You guys have to worry about winning a team fight. And with how much free gold they got. How much free XP they got. Uh, yeah. It's not. We're not very confident in winning a team fight, you know what I mean? Well, look at my playstyle. I'm level 15, enemy jungle is level 12, enemy top is level 13, enemy 
It is level 14. This is why it's scary. Nasus thinks he's really ahead, but he's not really, really ahead. And I can't really tell him what to do. I could try and ping him and be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. But like I said, no one's going to listen to you. They have to kind of just play your own game. Make work with what you can work with. Like, look, no one's push, pushing bot, splitting bot. I'll go push bot, split bot. They want to group up on my team, and if I think we can win it, then I'll play to group up and win the fight. And if I don't think we can win it, now I can look for the back door. And I don't think I have a very fast back door, but I, also, I do think I have a very high pressure back door. Yeah, that's good. This game was actually like the perfect game to show you my exact thoughts of a plot game. This is like a, I, I couldn't have gotten a better plot game. I played a lot of plot games. This is like the most plot game I've ever seen. This is platinum elo. Teach people how to climb out of platinum right now. The people getting caught off, the people just doing their own thing, living in their own little world. But right now, oh, I think we win the 4v4. New. So I'm going to go mid and kind of push this and look for our own things. Ow. Just zone him off. Team should just be looking to split the bot here. You guys flip bot while I go mid, huh? Save my W for Twitch, so if he ever tries to go on me, I can just W him away. My entire team backed up for whatever reason. Don't know why! Oh, this guy just used Ghost. Free some. He wants a flash from here, too. Yeah, he does. Oh, bad boy. Love it. Red buff's not yours, either. Look how much they type as well. That's why I say good mental. Listen, man, if you have a good mental, you'll be layers ahead of so many of these players. This is like the worst elo for mental. Like everyone's mental is just kaboomed, perma. Oh, we should just fight this. Cause look, one just reset, one's mid, and there's two over here. They don't die immediately. We can win this pretty easy. And they died immediately. Scary game, boys, scary game. To make sure I kill that boy. I'm trying to zone off who I can. Oh, baby. I just want to let him, I don't just want to stand there and let him auto me. Okay, so notice when you play purple cane, you're looking to play a lot more like slow. You're playing the fights out off your CDs and you have very, you have a lot of CDs. So in these type of compositions, I have to play it slow because I have to wait out the damage reduction. I have to wait out the blind. I have to make sure that Twitch dies. I have to make sure there's a lot of things that are scary, but see, this is just understanding how champions work. So if you do want to climb out of platinum elo, you're gonna have to do a little bit more research on how champions work. This is where I would recommend, you know. Normally if you're plat diamond, I find that you have more experience. You, you've been playing longer, you've been watching more. And you know, honestly, it's not hard to get. If you truly enjoy the game, you know, you're playing ARAMs, you're playing with friends, you're playing anything. It's not hard to understand how champs work. Sometimes you don't even need to play champs. You could just play against them. I know how a lot of champs work, but champs I've never even played. But you know what? I'll watch people play them. I'll watch my teammates play them, I'll watch the enemies play them, and I'll know so much about how they work, you know? If I have any specific question, like let's say I want to know Warwick's base ult CD. If I play Warwick's, so actually no, it's, it's it's not that long. Um, most most ult CDs are pretty like guessable, depending on their impact. Like Teemo streams aren't that impactful, so they're like, they're, like what, like 30, 45 seconds early on, if aside from the stacks. Maybe like 60 seconds, but most ults are like two minutes base like Darius ult I'd say is like two minutes base we have Maw I feel like they have a lot of AP damage <gasps> well I could have gone with man immune if I want to be more aggressive here more damage that'd probably be better a lot of their team comp dies and like if I just get more damage I don't need to actually stay alive longer I just need to kill the imported members because once the imported members are gone it's really easy to space them out like once Teemo and um Twitch Soraka are dead I mean honestly just Twitch Soraka alone once they're dead the fight's just pretty much over 
just understanding like which champions are weak, which ones are strong. I feel like a lot of like blue cane and red cane are pretty like basic champs of like how you should be playing them. Like every fight I'm looking to just hard dive this guy, right? Now this is a 4v5, so we're kind of just looking to like stall as long as we can here. I guess we just let the timer end the game. This work is extremely sped up. And that's the game! Good job, Heimer. <laughs> well, we'll play it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck climbing out of flat, boys. Peace.